So we've been talking about the skin and it's important to talk about the repair mechanisms. And one of the issues that we have with skin is sun damage. Okay, so let's talk about the sun and the skin and vitamin D and also the damage that can happen from that. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And like, we all know that we need to have some sunlight and we need to have that, you know, vitamin D, right? So we go out in the sun, we get that vitamin D. But we also know that sun can, can cause, the sunlight can cause damage, particularly UV light can cause damage and that happens at the level of the DNA. Okay, so at the, at the DNA level, all the way down inside the cell, inside the, the nucleus, all the DNA is wrapped up and, and does this little thing and the, it receives chemical damage in a, in a variety of ways, okay? A lot of uh, oxidative stress, uh, heavy metal pollutions, things like that can all damage DNA. The, the, most of these chemical damage happens in the form of a single strand break, okay? So imagine you've got these two strands of DNA and they actually twist around, it's called the helix. And you've probably seen the, the pictures of the DNA wrapped and you've got one strand on the outs, you know, these two, these two strands of the ladder that rotate around and then you've got these little rungs of the ladder. Well, this outside of the ladder, okay, uh, is, is a strand is considered a strand. And when one of those strands breaks, the, it's pretty easy that the, the body actually, the, the cell actually has mechanisms that go along and identify these little breaks and just seals them back up. There's a little enzyme that runs along the DNA and it finds these breaks. And that's most of the chemical damage that we experience. If you, you, know, if you, have, if you don't have enough antioxidants in your, in your cells, uh, or like I said, if you get exposed to chemical damage of some kind, it's usually in that form. It, it'll, it'll break open the DNA and the, the body will go around and it can repair that back again. Well, a double-stranded break, which is what happens with uh, uh, radiation, okay, this is x-ray damage, UV damage, uh, what happens is you get, a, it snaps the DNA in half, okay? And if you, I mean, so like I said, the DNA is all wrapped up, it's not, it's not jumbled, it's not a jumbled mess, it's a highly organized uh, uh, a, you know, a, a arrangement of this of this DNA, but there's they're closely packed together. So you have you have strands that wrap around proteins called histones, and so these strands imagine it like thread that on on a spool. Okay, so if you had a whole spool of thread and you went in with a knife and you made a slice, well, you're not going to just cut one strand or one 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 thing of DNA. You're going to cut you know 50, 20, 100, or 100 million. Okay. And so what happens with UV radiation in general is it causes those DNA breaks, but it cuts all the way through. Now we have a different problem, okay? Now we have DNA that has broken apart. And now the, there is a, a repair mechanism, but it's a different, it's a different uh, a type of repair mechanism, and it will go and it will try to put the, it will put the DNA back together. It's a double strand break DNA repair, but the problem is, if it's got a neighbor that's also broken, and you know, then it, it potentially can make a mistake. It can sit there and put this strand up with this strand, and this one back with this one, and you get these connections being made that are now erroneous. Well, when you make erroneous connections in the DNA, you've changed the pattern, you've changed the base pair arrangement, and you effectively now have a mutation, okay? So this is where we, there's the link, an understood link between DNA damage, especially through radiation damage, and cancer or other problems that come, you know, radiation damage, it makes the cell very sick potentially because you've got this damage to the DNA that is irreparable. In other words, you can repair the strand, but now we've actually made a mistake. We've introduced a mess up in the, in the misarrangement of the DNA. So this is what we talk about when we talk about, uh, you know, like I said, exposure, sun exposure, causing damage, and then eventually leading to skin cancer, right? And it's down the road because most of these little, uh, uh, well, first of all, if the most uh, mutational changes, you know, can happen in areas of the DNA that are not as important. I mean, they, they're not coding regions, for example. I think there's only 10% or even less uh, of the coding regions are actually making proteins. Most of the rest of them are structural arrangements to help DNA arrange itself uh, or be arranged around, around the proteins and organized inside the nucleus. So there's a lot of, of, of leeway in the DNA strands and in the chromosomes themselves that you can, you can make some changes in there and not necessarily affect the functioning of the cell.
But when you accumulate enough of these over time and you start out early enough, this is why sunburn, for example, or radiation exposure early, early in life is, is a bad idea. Um, because, and we've all heard that, you know, with, oh, the, this particular, you know, basal cell or whatever, these other, these other different skin cancers, oh, that was all done a long time ago. That damage was done back when you were young, right? Back when you didn't care and you ran around and we didn't have sunblock and all the rest of this stuff. And, and then over time, uh, as we've made enough of those, uh, if we had enough of those cells that got damaged and got repaired back and put together in the wrong way, then it eventually... Uh, accumulated enough of those kinds of things that led to to a cancer situation. So, it's a obviously a real concern, uh, and it's been extensively studied. Uh, Dr. Um, Jaime Mata in in Puerto Rico has done a, a career studying sun damage and and the things that happen with the you know the link between sun damage and, and the skin cancer and all the rest of it. Because Puerto Rico obviously is you know out on the beach, the tendency is to be out on the beach and be out in the sun. Okay, so. The, uh, uh, it was an interesting study because he was uh, studying how the body has natural repair mechanisms and what kinds of things can affect the repair mechanisms. So I was actually talking with him uh, at the, when Young Living had a clinic in, uh, in, in Utah, and I said, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if any of the essential oils might uh, uh, be uh, help with that basic process. Now, like I said, the body has primary processes. It has repair mechanisms. These are natural processes that exist inside the cell. And so we can talk about things that uh, support natural processes, okay? So in the case of DNA repair, there is natural DNA repair mechanisms. And so I said, hey, that's interesting. Could you study essential oils and find out if there are any essential oils that can help with uh, stimulating or, or, or help maintaining DNA repair? And so he said, yeah, we have an assay for that. And we use the, the, the uh, assay to, to evaluate both in vivo and in vitro. I'm not going to explain all that. But he went through and studied a few of the oils and found out that frankincense actually helps stimulate DNA repair mechanisms, and uh, so he showed that in the lab, both in vivo and in vitro, and I thought that was a very interesting phenomenon because we always, uh, or traditionally, people have looked at frankincense as a fabulous cosmetic that helps the skin, right? And so here we have uh, science backing up the concept that in, in essential oil, in this particular case, frankincense, might actually be helping protect and promote the natural processes that are going on inside the cell for DNA repair. And uh, you know, so that's, there are definitely, like I said, our body has natural mechanisms, but we can usually find things in the natural world that will help it do it better, okay? Especially when we hit it hard and get things overwhelmed, then we can use something that can help us in this. And, and, and I can, I'm, I'm, I think we're overwhelming our system a lot more than, than, than we otherwise would have if we didn't have all these chemicals, industrial chemicals and things in, in, the, in the world. There's also some question about how the, 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 with sunspots and everything, we go through different eras and times, and we're talking about you know, large scale times, uh, you know, hundreds of years where sunspot activity will be different, uh, where the, right now I think the Earth's magnetic field is fracturing, uh, and so we're getting a lot more radiation coming through, a lot more solar radiation coming through, which might be one of the reasons we're having all this climate change and why the science might be a little confusing about, you know, what, what's causing what. Um, but the, you know, when we get more solar radiation coming through and hitting, we're going to end up with that harsher, harsher sun. And I don't know if you've noticed that. The sun feels a little harsher sometimes. It seems to bite a little more. Um, then, then when I remember that even just, you know, back as a kid or even 10, 15, 20 years ago. And so it's, uh, it, I find it interesting that God provides for us all the tools that we need in, in any time of era that we have it. So at a time when we probably need a lot more protection from damage, we bring, you know, we, all of a sudden we've launched out into a very popular awareness of essential oils and essential oil use. So I, I just find that very interesting. So a little bit of that sun and sun damage. Let me transition a little bit into vitamin D. We know that we need a little bit of vitamin D uh, and that the skin manufactures that in response to UV. So I'm not saying that being in the sun 
is a, is a, all all completely bad. I do cover up for the most part, okay, because it, I just don't want to burn. And I did a lot of sunburning on my nose, and my ears, uh, you know, for in, in in my early days, and you know, peel and 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 scab and all the rest of that stuff. And so I definitely don't I don't want any more. Uh, sun exposure, you know, on certain areas, and so I try to cover up, uh, you know, and and stay out of the sun. I don't want to sunburn at all, and uh, and but I do need, you know, obviously we need to get some exposure, uh, and it's not clear to me. I mean, there's been a number of different studies that have shown that you need what 15 minutes a day or something, but I'm not sure how much skin exposure, how much you have to have your shirt off for 15 minutes a day. I just haven't haven't looked into the the research on that. Um, so I think it's reasonable to supplement. I mean, for me, it's reasonable to supplement vitamin D. Uh, of course, we'd like to get everything naturally, but we just don't run around with our shirts off very much anymore. Um, and and I, I think at some level that's wise. So I'm kind of playing the the leaning on the fact that we have supplements uh, that we can do this, uh, and and I can protect myself from the the, the sunlight that seems so harsh and that I've already done the damage and I want to, you know, I want to protect from that. So I generally tend, to, yes, of course, I try to get out in the sun, but I do rely on supplementing vitamin D uh, to make sure that I get that, uh, that extra boost that we need, nutritional boost that we need from being out in the sun. There's other reasons to being in the sun, just to be feeling and connecting to nature and get back to, to feeling like we're, you know, we're in the world. Uh, instead of sitting in a little cubicle or in a, in a you know cement or wood box that we do all day long um, and getting back to connecting with nature and that's one thing that I love about the essential oils that we can of course have them in our little cement box or a little cubicle we can put our essential oils inside and and you know basically get the same benefit of, of a forest not quite but you know you, you throw in one of those blends like believe uh, and and you've really got an amazing forest that you're that you're getting you know flowering forest that you're getting right there in your in your little area. So uh, bring nature back into your your environment with the essential oils and whether that's diffusing or just putting them on. But um, there's a it's just a fun time to be exploring you know how uh, these these tools from nature can be used to support us even in these modern times, especially in these modern times when we need it so much. Every day we do a little bit more on our wellness journey, so continue uh, uh, with it every day. Wellness is worth it. Join us uh, every day here on this channel. Uh, we're doing these little 15 minute videos. If we're going through the skin, we'll talk a lot more about this for the rest of the month. Tune in next time. Happy wellness, we'll see you tomorrow.